Hey everybody, welcome back to Dad Does Videos. Today we're going to put together this Silverback NXT 54 portable basketball goal. The nice thing about it, just before you even open it up, it lets you know what tools are required. So we'll pop this box open, see what it looks like, and go from there. Okay, we got the box off, the box top off. As you can see, this is pretty well packed in here. Uh, I guess we'll look for some kind of instruction sheet that says, hey, step one, go here. And as you can see, we have Madden 1059 helping us out today. So let's find that sheet and go from there. Okay, so we're ready for our first step. As you can see here, it says assemble parts two and three, tighten hardware. They give you kind of a broad look and then a close up view. You know what's really nice about this? the packaging that they did here. They tell you up in the upper right hand corner the hardware needed and then the way they package the hardware they tell you exactly what each of these is by the labeling beneath each one. So there's no confusion as to hey is this the right screw or is this the right washer or is this the right lock nut? It's a nice look and they even give you spare parts. So as you can see on this, we're looking for the hex head bolt M10 1.5 times 65 millimeters, and that is right here. And, it, and we're gonna do the same thing and look for the other two pieces. And I've got those two pieces laid out here, so we just need to, as the direction showed, connect this piece into here with those bolts. So we'll do that and be back. Okay, so we've got step one finished. As you can see here, I connected these two pieces from the directions. Part three, which is the piece laying down right there, and then part two, the piece laying up. If uh, you don't have a good um, socket set, I would suggest you get one. So I use what you see there on the right to turn the bolt and hold held the screw with uh, uh, just a pair of pliers. It's important here to make sure these, these bolts are just finger tight. It tells you that in the directions. I think the usual propensity for people is to make them pretty tight, but you're gonna want this assembly to wiggle a little bit as we move to the next step. And as on that next step, as you can see here, step two, we're attaching this pole assembly, part 12. And I have that right here. And we're gonna put that, attach it right to this piece uh, sticking out. So we'll go ahead and do that and be back. Hey everybody, here's a, a little tip when you're going through step two. I actually flip the assembly on its side because as opposed to the directions where it shows you, you have to put this uh, the long bolt through the bottom like this it was really hard to see where the bolt was coming through uh, the pole. So I flipped it on its side because that way when the bolt goes in here, you can play with the, um, the tube and kind of look up underneath there to see where it's coming down and kind of wiggle this as you push the bolt in and then wiggle the bottom so it matches up down here. So who knows if that'll work for anybody else, but I found it to be pretty useful. That's step two. We'll move on to step three in a second. Okay, on to step three, at this, you can see at the upper right, left-hand corner, excuse me, you can see the tools needed. We are going to secure that pole that we just put on. We're basically going to attach the brackets together. As you can see there, there are holes still right there in the brackets and over there. It looks like we're gonna attach those. And again, you can see the hardware, which is really nice because all we have to do is look for 36, 23, and 24 on our, um, our labels here. And as you can see, here's 36, 23, and just like all of these other ones, okay, there is 24. So they did a really nice job labeling these. There's no confusion as to which screw or which bolt you're supposed to use at all. So we'll go ahead and, and finish up this step and I'll let you know if there are any tips along the way. Uh, looks like this is another 
Uh, so after we finish this, I just noticed you'll, you'll see the note to tighten all hardware at this time. So we'll tighten these really tightly. Um, it looks like they want to just get everything set up in those previous two steps from a hand tightened perspective. And after we finish this, we'll tighten up everything really tight with our sockets, as you can see up here. Okay, and we're back. And as you can see, step three is finished. We've got all these screws tightened up. We've got this big tube attached to the bracket down here. And we tightened everything up with our socket wrench. So we're set for step four. In step four is to put the axle bushings into the sides of the steel tube. So they're a little tricky to find in your box. They come in this bag with a bunch of other plastic black things. Here's what the axle bushing looks like. So you'll need to find two of these and what you do is you put this in here on each side and then I just happen to have a spare part of a 2x4 standing around and you'll want to hit the 2x4 where the bushing is with a mallet and the reason why you do that is if you hit the mallet if you hit the bushing by itself you'll damage it with the mallet so by putting the 2x4 up there or any kind of spare piece of wood that's thick enough you won't you won't damage it so we'll go ahead and do that and be back okay as you can see we've got our bushings in on both the right side and the left side we tapped them in using the wood block in the mallet and as you can see these are pretty flush uh, you can't see any of the inside of the bushings on either side so that's a wrap on that step okay so we're on the step six and we have to insert an axle into the lower assembly steel tube until both ends of stick out about the same distance. So we're going to find something that goes in right here and goes out right there and sticks out about the same time. So we think we found it. We think it's this piece right here below all my uh, pieces and parts. It was a little bit tricky to find just because there's so many different pieces and parts in the box. But that's it. So we're going to open that up and slide that on in. Okay, so we've got the axle in there. As so, you can see, there's a little piece of it sticking out on each end. One little tip here, when you slide it in, uh, you might have to jiggle it on whichever end you're sliding it, uh, it's, it's coming out of, just because it gets stuck on the bushings. So just play around with that. Shouldn't take you more than just a few seconds to do that, but just something we ran into. Okay, so we'll move along to step seven. It looks like we're putting the wheels on here. It looks like the wheels Wait, go on to that axle that we just put on. So this is this will be the way that you move your portable basketball hoop. Uh, most of the time it's gonna stay in the same spot, but if you do need to move it, this is always helpful. Um, it's a lot easier to move it on wheels than to just try to pick it up or something like that, especially after you get your water or sand in it as we'll get into later on. So we'll go ahead and put these wheels on and see, tell you what it looks like. So here's step seven complete. We've got our wheels on, uh, even though you can read this in the directions, just take note that the inner and outer pieces of the wheel, number eight and number six, they're already pre-assembled. If they fell off during shipping or whatever, you could just probably just find them in the box and pop them in. Uh, just make sure the flat parts of the wheels go on the outside. That's it for step seven. We'll move along to step eight. Okay, so we're on the step eight. Looks like we're gonna insert this axle rod through the wheels that we just put on. The axle rod comes in this long package right here. Ours says 910 and, or excuse me, 918 and uh, 19 on it. So we are going to grab a washer and go ahead and do that. It looks like we might need some help from somebody else to make sure the, uh, the wheel, the second wheel stays on as we wiggle the axle rod through. Okay, so just a quick tip. We open up that package and inside are actually three tubes. For this step, you want to use that metal one, that silver one that's right in the middle of those. Those other two black tubes we're going to use later. Okay, so we got step nine finished. As you can see, we inserted that rod into this one wheel and the directions were right. You kind of have to play around and hold the second wheel down where you try to find the hole for it through here. 
So you just make sure this is stable as you as you try to find the hole as the uh, the rod goes through this steel tube. And as you can see, you know you're good when you can see the bottom of it coming out the other side. We'll be back with the next step. Okay, so we're up to step nine. We are going to, not surprisingly, secure that wheel on to the rod that we just inserted. So as you can see, I already got the hardware needed out. It matches everything in the pictures. I think the important point here is to not over tighten as you can see in the directions it's bolted and to leave about a quarter inch of the uh, the thread of the axle rod sticking out. So we could probably do a double check to spin those wheels freely after we uh, we get this thing set up. Okay so we got finished with step nine. I had to double check my notes there and as you can see we uh, left about a quarter inch I'm not sure how well you can see but there's about a quarter inch of tread left right there so what this allows the wheels to do is spin freely so we can move this like this and it's not too tight enough for the uh, the wheels to move because you know at some point you're gonna want to move your basketball hoop it's probably not a bad idea to double check that every once in a while to make sure that screw hasn't come on loosened but uh, it looks like a quarter inch of tread. It looks like our wheels are movable, so we're good to the next step. Hey everybody, we're on to step 10 now, and what we're going to do, as you can see, we are going to fill the wheels with sand. I know it says water in here, but I'm filling it with sand for two reasons. One, we don't have to worry about the water freezing in the winter time, and then cracking the, the wheels, and then two, sand is denser than water so it will make the hoop even more stable and the wheels more stable so we'll put sta sand in the uh the base of the uh the hoop as well so what you have to do is basically unscrew for step 10 this little hole on the top of the wheel that's where we put the sand in and if we go into our little grab bag here, uh, this is the, the piece that you need. It is called the wheel plug key. And as you can see, it has the right shape. It's a hexagon to go right in this piece. The wheel will twist it out and start to pour the sand in. And as you can see here, there's a little funnel that uh, is also included and what we'll do is pour the sand right in there be back when we're finished but we'll move on to step 11 and as you can see here we're going to put uh, what they call the ballast over the lower pole so it's basically the base of the basketball hoop and we'll just insert that on top of the uh, the pole so here's our, our big base and we're going to put that right on top of the hole okay so we have the base attached this is what it should look like um, you might have to wiggle it on mine got stuck a little bit uh, but just keep pushing it down until it looks like it's right just use common sense as you can see uh, the wheels are uh, right below where they should be on each side just a good way to double check um, and we'll screw that on top here in a bit step 12 is to attach the tubes 18 and 19. I've got them laid out. Remember we saw those earlier and you'll know they're 18 and 19 because they're red. there's a red dot on one and a green dot on another one. So what you have to do is attach the green dot to the green dot hole and then we'll be attaching the bottom uh, into this uh, part. So up here it'll kind of look like this and on the bottom, it'll be somewhere around there uh, per the directions. Okay, just a little tip as we're going through this. So as you can see, that's the hole they go in. It probably would occur to you to not put it in the other one because this the black part doesn't fit in here. But make sure on the bottom, and this is what they mean by the hand tighten thing for now, is... It goes into the screw goes into uh, that bracket that is already on the bottom and is underneath the base of the um, 
the hoop. It's just the piece that we already put on before and it goes right in there. You might need another person to kind of help you with this one. Okay, so we've got the bottoms in. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, we uh, only hand tighten those. And this is what these should look like up here. As you can see, these are not attached per the directions. So those are just laying there like that. As you can see, they make a big deal out of it. Uh, they're not attached at all right here. So we'll move on to the, the next step, step 13. And it looks like we're gonna secure the base to the assembly, no surprise, right? Okay, so I thought I'd show you a tip and show you exactly what they mean when in the directions, if you'll recall. They said they might, you might have to use your thumb to push the bolt in. I've already got the first one in, so this one will be a little bit easier. But there's a hole on the bottom where this uh, the screw, the bolt has to go through. And the way it, it goes in, you can see it's slightly tilted. So what you have to do to get this thing to go in is push it in a little bit, like I just did, and then kind of wiggle it around on the bottom to um, to make sure it goes into the hole. And I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now because I need my other hand, but that's what they mean. It starts up here, just push it in to make it go down, and then wiggle it around to find the hole on the bottom. Okay, we're on to step 14. It looks like we're putting the middle pole labeled 50 with a warning label facing forward and sliding it on to the lower pole number 12. So, if you find your pole, you should be able to find it. There's 50, there's the warning label. So we're gonna pop that right on top of this and make sure all those holes are aligned. Okay, so I've got number 50, the pole in, the warning label's facing me. And if you look down here, the holes are aligned. You can see in there, and it's the same thing on the other side. <sighs> This is how you know you're set up and ready to go and put those bolts in so we'll attach this stuff okay we've got the bolt in one thing to just keep in mind here when you put it in and make sure you put it on the lower one there are two holes it will make sense when you're building this but just to avoid confusion um, and again like a lot of these other ones you have to kind of jiggle it around and force things a little going to the other side hand tighten only and you're ready to go to the next step. Okay, so for step 16, we are going to secure the pole right above where, where uh, we just uh, put that bolt in for the last step. So on it, it's right here. There's gonna be a bolt going in right here and one in there. So here's what these should look like. One thing to point out here, is that, and they say this in the in the directions, but um, I thought I'd just show you this. We have the hexagonal shape. Make sure your screw, like the head, fits right in there. It shouldn't rest on top like, like that. I don't know if you can tell specifically, but that's not in. It has to fit actually in the shape. So we've got one going in that way, one going in that way. They're hand tightened right now. I'm assuming we'll just tighten those up later. So there it is, step 17. That's where we start to tighten things. So as you see in detail A here, we're going to do the front first. So these and the bottoms. And then we're gonna flip around and do the back. As you can see, they pointed out. These will be second, so we're gonna do that. So we finished step 17, we're on to 18, where we're going to continue to tighten hardware. It looks like we're gonna be doing the things on the poles right now, uh, where the hexagons are. And as you can see here in the note on the bottom right, they specifically call out to make sure those heads of those bolts are inserted into the cutout in the pole. So we'll take extra care to do that. And also, while it's supposed to be tight, in the bold you can also see make sure you don't crush the tube that would uh certainly be a disappointment to whomever is using okay so this. we finished this step just another tip and i know this says this in the directions but sometimes it's easier to see visually when someone's actually doing it so 
You want to tighten this one first, and then you want to tighten this one, and then the last one to tighten is the one in the back. And make sure, again, those last two, the hexagons fit snugly in the space. Okay, so we're moving on to step 19. This is when you need to find this box with the actuator lock assembly, reinforcement plate, and actuator roller. So for this step, you need these pieces. This is the lock assembly right there. And this is the reinforcement plate. So in the directions, it tells you to attach uh, the reinforcement plate to the front of the pole and they give you a real nice visual how this is the front of the pole remember that's where we have the warning label so the reinforcement plate is going to attach to this right up here actually and on the back is where we'll have that other piece for the uh, the assembly so we've got our reinforcement plate right on the front attached with those hexagonal bolts and then on the back the assembly. Everything's tightly connected. We didn't overdo it, but everything's snug. Okay, everybody, we're on to step 20. It looks like we are going to insert the screw through the actuator bracket, which we just put on. And remember this, this is the actuator roller, which came in the same package as the bracket and um, the bracket that we just attached. So we're going to put all these things together. It looks like we have to take special care to not over tighten the nut and be sure there's no more than one to two threads sticking out from the nut. So we'll do that and show you what it looks like. Okay so we've got this screw inserted and as you can see the spins pretty freely, the roller in there, and that's what you want. And if you'll also recall, the direction said to only have a thread or two sticking out of the screw. So right here, it's probably a little hard to see, but there is no more than a thread or two sticking out. Back up a little bit, my side angle. And the, I would just suggest you go gently first and make sure it's tight, but make sure on top that roller uh, can spin freely. So if we look at step 21, we are going to get our top pole 51. That's this one. And it looks like we can skip it. Uh, you can see the note at the top says if the pole cap is already installed, skip step 21 so we don't have to bang it in with a mallet. As you can see in detail A, our top is already on right here. So goodbye, step 21. On step 22, we are just going to put this, the uh, number 51, the top pole into what we've already put together. Uh, and it calls out particularly that those both bars, which would be these two right here are front facing. So these two, what I just showed you, go down and they face the front where these other two bars are. Okay, so here's the front of our hoop and you can see the two rods down there. As you recall in the directions, we have our top pole and you can see the, the top uh, two rods going across our front facing. There is one more on the back that's a little bit higher, but you want those front two facing the front. Okay, no surprise, right? In step 23, we are going to screw the poles together, 51 to 50, as you can see here with uh, three screws. Just important to note here, we're finger tightening only, and you're putting in the two screws from the left first, as you can see in detail A, and then the one screw from the center in detail B. Okay, so we've got these in right now and you can still see they're pretty loose, right? I could twist these, 
Same thing with a one. This one, two. But they're all good to go. The next step is to tighten these. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And again, the directions call out specifically for this step to tighten the screw that comes in from the left first and then the ones that come in from the front or excuse me the one that comes in from the front first in detail a and then the ones that come in from the right uh, last and then specifically tighten that last one at the top of detail B last okay so you can see these are in quite tightly sorry for the darkness can't help mother nature here one thing to keep in mind like an earlier step you have to make sure that these go in the hexagonal holes that are uh, carved out of the tube they have to fit right in there um, to make sure everything's nice and tight on this side you can see that one thing to keep in mind here you don't want to tighten these too tight I mean they want you want them to be tight right but I mean I can't move these anymore but you don't want to crush the tube so just be aware of that when you're uh, at this step okay we made it to step 25 26 and 27 and it looks like for these we have to have a quote-unquote capable adult we have to tip the hoop over and balance it on a four foot object. So we're going to use our step ladder. So I'm going to go grab another capable adult, bend this thing over and balance it on there so that then we can continue with step 28 where we attach the upper arms. Okay, so we've got our basketball pole tipped over onto our four foot ladder. So we're set there and we're going to move on to step 28. And this is where we attach the arms to the upper pole. As you can see here are what the upper arms look like. You can see that the two poles basically with the notches up there. Just a couple little tips as you put this together. Make sure these pieces that you put in right here right here where the notch is on top for the first set and your poles have this notch on top and they're facing backwards and then the second set of poles you put together the notch on those same ones is on the bottom and then these rings or notches are facing frontwards Okay, step 29, looks like lots of action going on here. The main component other than those pieces of hardware you see on the top of the screen is the backboard box. And if you'll recall, we had in our bigger box that this thing came in, something called, hey, weird, the backboard box. This is what it looks like. So it looks like we'll be attaching that to all those poles that we put on. As you can see down here, and finger tightening and making sure not to over tighten and something else to point out and we'll see how this goes you tighten this hardware and then back off half a turn once you feel the hardware snug in a couple different situations so I'll go through that show you what it looks like and give you any tips if uh, there are any okay if you'll so if you'll recall in our step we were supposed to tighten these bolts these ones first on the bottom and then these on top from the previous step, we were supposed to tighten them and then back off a half a turn. And the reason why is because you're supposed to be able to have a little wiggle room. So see how mine has a little wiggle room, but it's still tight. Like I could feel it being tight, but it's loose enough that this can move up and down. And this is what you want. Another thing to keep in mind here as you're tightening these, these... I don't even know what they're called now, but these spacers basically, um, and then there's one back there and one back there. Make sure they're tight. Um, when I first started tightening everything, there was some space between the pole and the, some of the spacers, so I had to kind of back off and reset things to make sure everything was tight. On the step 30, where we are putting the springs 
onto the upper arm. So it looks like this has a little bit of logistics behind it. Uh, it suggests the help of another person. I don't have that person with me right now, so we'll see how this goes. You can see there's a little call out for keeping the fingers away from the coils, but it looks like from the outside in, we put the, the coil on the top one first and then raise this bottom one until it uh, connects. So, we'll put it in here first, the coil, and then I think what we'll have to do is raise this up so they're close enough so that then they can connect. We'll give that a shot next. This wasn't as challenging as I thought it was going to be. I have both the springs in. I think the big tip here is when you start to put this on and when you uh, just, just loop that hook in right there, I think the natural inclination is to grab this and start to pull it down so it connects with that. Don't do that. You're gonna get your fingers and your skin caught in this. Just take your finger and pull it down like this and hold the other bar up so that you're you'll just just pulling use some finger strength and put it in the the little hole right there. On the step 32, and this is a little bit of a milestone here, right? Because we're attaching the backboard. And it looks like I really do need to have a person to hold the backboard while I insert the hitch pins into the supports. I don't I don't think logistically I can do that by myself, but uh, it, it looks like you just put the, the backboard up to this part, which you just created right here, slide it on to these pins. And then there is a hole right here on each side. And that's where you put the hitch pins in. Okay, so we've got our backboard on. I enlisted the help of two people, one to hold each side as we pushed the backboard onto these screws that were sticking out and then inserted the pins into each side. And now we're on to step 33 where we are putting the rim onto the hoop as seen right here. So. We'll take the protective coating off the backboard before we attach the rim. And that's, that's just this film, it pulls right off. So we'll go ahead and do that and put the rim on. So we've got our rim up right now, as you can see. You pretty much have to kind of sit underneath here logistically and use your ratchet upwards to tighten all the bolts. So step 34, we're just going to attach the net to the rim as shown in detail A. That should be pretty simple. Okay, so we're in the midst of putting our, our net up. And the first tip here is if you're curious which side. Okay, so we're in the midst of putting our, our net up. And the first tip here is if you're curious which side is up for the nets, just look for the longer strings. Those are the ones that attach the loopholes. You can see they're a little closer together on the bottom. So go with the... Um, the longer strings and the way that you attach them if you're struggling is you just grab one end put it over top of both of these loops pull it through and make sure it goes underneath just like that so now that we have our net up we'll move along to step 35 and that is where we're going to attach the spring cover plate to the rim and again in your box you should have this spring cover plate inside it is that and we are going to attach that. It's basically going to go in and up like in there. Those two holes you see at the top of the rim, we're gonna go right in those two holes on the piece I'm holding. So we've got the plate attached. One thing to uh, just pay attention to when you're doing this, it's supposed to be inside these black things. So on the same uh, look on the other side, you want to make sure that it's inside there and you just have to squeeze it together a little bit and force it up um, or else it, it won't go up. You'll, you'll know that you have it right once you get inside there. But if you're struggling with trying to figure out how to put this piece in there, 
Uh, that's probably the reason you just need to force it inside those, those two pieces of black metal there and then on this side. We're on to step 36 and we're gonna use the actuator bar and if you've been following these directions, you, this should be the only big piece that you have left. It is this with the notches on it. We are going to take that and slide it into this piece while making sure this is open on this side. So I'm in the middle of putting this bar in and if you look in here you can see if I move this it's good this is gonna fall into place so that's what they're talking about when they're talking about <clears throat> moving this out and letting this slide in so this will lock it in place so I just thought this would be beneficial to kind of take a look at this so we're gonna move this out and slide this through <clears throat> so this is what this should look like once you've got it locked in place you can see we're through here. Um, what happens basically inside this is that these little notches fit into space provided in here and then they're locked in with this. So we're on to step 38 and we're gonna attach the other end of that actuator bar that we just put in through that locking me mechanism to the lower arms. So in reality, remember we just put this in, we are going to attach this part right here in through these holes. So we've got uh, this piece in place now and we left a couple threads on the end right here per the directions to make sure this is pretty loose. And just a little tip when we're going about doing this, this uh, actuator bar, I actually moved it further down uh, the hoop here because the problem was this piece was so far up here it was hard to actually find uh, align the, the holes all together here to get this across so as you can see this goes much deeper now into the locking mechanism to give a shorter amount of distance here which allows us to then put in our bolt uh, up top. So we're on the step 39 we are getting close to the end and then what we're doing here is putting together the grip at the end of the actuator bar. And if you'll recall, this should be the only piece left in your bag of goodies here that we've taken things out of throughout this process of putting this together. So we'll put that in the end, use our mallet in there to make sure it's nice and tight and then screw the screws in. So we've got our handle in at the bottom of the actuator bar we did use a mallet to tap this in a little bit. It got stuck about halfway through. It was really easy to just tap it in. And just when you're using that mallet, just be gentle with it. You don't have to smash it in all in, in one shot. Just be gentle with it and go through. And then when you're tightening these screws, just make sure you tighten, you, you tighten them in, but don't go overboard. You'll know when they're tight. So we've made it to step 40 and 41, and it looks like we're about ready to stand this up. My, um, little stabilizer that I put this on is a little bit lower than four foot so in the directions it tells you to adjust the system height the system height to eight feet and I don't think I can do that because I think my rim would <laughs> touch the ground it's only a few inches off the ground and if you're confused on where the height is on the back of the pole it tells you exactly what the height would be so if you put it in notch this first notch at seven and a half eight feet second notch and so on and so forth so we're gonna keep ours probably where it is and then just push it up it makes the uh the hoop a little heavier at the top but we'll get a capable adult to help us right we've got it all set up this is what your silverback nxt should look like when you're all finished we've got madden 1059 to give us a demo to see how it works Yay! We've got a few pounds, a few bags of sand in here right now, but we'll need to put a few more in. But as you can see, this is pretty stable when Madden 1059 takes a shot. Happy basketballing to everybody.